Uncle Howdy makes his Raw debut, an absent Raw star returns, and another Raw star is out with an injury. It's all in the wrestling news right now. Howdy. Ho, 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 ho. This is my ho, ho, ho. My lady, why I do declare? I want my doing my life. That's what Uncle Howdy does, everybody. Why he's so declare. <laughs> he is he is Benoit Blank from Glass Onion. I'll pretend I know what that means. I do declare. <laughs> but he did appear on last night's Monday Night Raw, didn't he, Tom? He certainly did. So Alexa Bliss uh, appeared on the announce table, you wacky person, and was saying and actually referenced Uncle Howdy. Actually referenced Bray Wyatt. Mm. We've been seeing the fireflies appear on the screen and send her a little bit. Uh, a little bit wild uh, and now she's saying that she is the one in charge she is the face of evil oh, you think you're the one in charge you're the one in charge <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> how Uncle Howdy reacted uh, a video cut her off on her rant uh, and we saw clips of a, of a black and white playground sort of her alluding to Alexa's playground from back in today we saw clips of her when she was last with Bray Wyatt and Uncle Howdy over the top going do you feel like you're in charge? I just did that, but a That's bit worse. What he did. I like the way you did it better. Do it again. <laughs> you see your thoughts? <laughs> It's like he's here. Yeah. And I'm confused why he has a different mask on again, though, because when he appeared on SmackDown, he had, like, a battle mask on, but now he's back to the Bo Selector number. Is he not allowed to have different masks? We wear different clothes every day. He's a two-faced son of a gun. That's what he is. <laughs> Maybe that's the thing. Oh. Oh, wheels within wheels. He's two-faced. Oh. Ooh. A yeah. subliminal message, you And there. he actually made his raw debut. He walked out through the smoke like he was on stars in their eyes <laughs> and, <laughs> and did all of this. <laughs> all of this motion and all this stuff. Um, a few things from this. Uh, Five for Select reporting that Bo Dallas was backstage at Raw last night. This pretty much confirms that Bo Dallas is portraying Uncle Howdy. You did some research as well, didn't you? I was going to say, before I got ill up and didn't appear on last week's Cultaholic Wrestling podcast on Friday, I did lots of research. And the forehead-to-face ratio, it is Bo Dallas's forehead-to-face ratio. Mm. The mask, the battle mask, and the forehead-to-face ratio of Bo Dallas, they are in sync, therefore I can confirm exclusively that it is Bo Dallas. That is exactly Journalism. right. Journalism. <laughs> and uh, yes, I think it was, It's. I'm glad that it's Bo. I think that makes sense. I think Adam and I had a chat about it, and uh, Adam was like, "Well, it's too big to be Bo." And I think, "Well, no, he's, he's a slender he's man. The heights match up as not well." Not the slender man. No, no, no. Yeah, not yeah, not that's a gym diff- thing. Yeah, that's a different spooky <laughs> thing. That is. Um, you made an interesting point before we came downstairs um, when Alexa Bliss cut her promo. You said that her heart wasn't in it. I don't know what it is, but it just feels like we saw the goddess way back in the day and the sass she was capable of back then. But when we're looking at her on the announce table, they go, I'm in control and I have all the power in my hands and I'm not afraid to use it to rip the... I'm just feeling like she's not giving it her all, but is that by design or is that just me just being an arsehole. And it could be by design. It, it could c- be me being an arsehole. It could be you being an arsehole. It could be a, it could be a bit of column A and a bit of column B. Uh, in a WWE YouTube exclusive, uh, the Raw talk bit after Raw, uh, Alexa Bliss uh, doubles down saying that she is the one in control and not Uncle Howdy. And she's going to rip the face of Bianca Belair a little bit more in the mm. weeks to come. Uh, staying on Monday Night Raw, we have top contenders for the Raw tag team titles, don't we? The Judgment Day. Mm. They won a tag team term all match. Otis was doing all kinds of good things and all of a sudden it was over. Damien Priest <laughs> and Finn Balor, they get the win and the Judgment Day are off to races. They are. They beat the Good Brothers, Alpha Academy, Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. More on them in a moment and the Street Profits to win the whole thing. It was a shutout of a tag team turmoil for the Judgment Day. Um, they will challenge for the Raw tag titles next week. Not both Ooh. but just the Raw ones. Do we think they'll, they'll split the belts up again then? It feels not like we're obviously get- next week but down the line. It feels like we're getting to that point. Not only with the tag team titles but with Roman's titles as well how are we going to get there I've got no idea they can't just do it like you've won the raw ones it needs to be built up a bit more to that do you think do you think it should be a bit more of a thing yeah I, f- I feel like with um, with with Roman losing his belt, it should be like like a like a last boss losing bits of his armor. Like they should go very quickly one after the other. Yeah. Uh, the Raw tag titles, I think, in the same way. I thought they might just keep the belts together and might just have floating champions again. I'm fine with that. I wouldn't be opposed to one tag team division because we saw how yeah. bad it can get. Yeah. Under the previous regime, it has you know no, it would be mean better under the Triple H regime. But you know, I don't want to go back to those bad days. Mm. Tag team wrestling is really good. It is good. Yeah. It is good when you really invest in it. It is very very good. 
Uh, we saw one of those tag teams being Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. Their mate Bobby Lashley returned last night as well after four weeks of suspension. Uh, he immediately made a beeline for Austin Theory, uh, speared him to the ground and then declared for the Rumble. I do declare. I do. Uh, rumble <laughs> out. I do declare. Uh, later in the night, MVP had a chat with Bobby, didn't he? The Hurt Business is getting back together. We've mm. seen it a number of times over the past few weeks. Just sort of in the background of shot MVP, Shelton and Cedric, just having a little talk with Adam Pierce, just in the background of shot from time to time. And now we've got this definitive meeting with Lashley and MVP. Uh, Ke- is, it, is it Kevin Patrick? Who- no, no, it's Byron. Is it Byron who's there? He's like, get out of here. Mm. I do declare you get out of here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks like we're getting that back together. And I am all on board with that because they didn't go all the way. Uh, well, they did go all the way because he was the champion, wasn't he, Bobby? But it felt like they could have done more before they disbanded the thing. They ran Raw Underground. What are you talking about? <laughs> Remember? I've Raw. repressed that oh. in my subconscious. Raw, I don't blame you. <laughs> Raw Underground. Remember her? Um, also, last night, talking of the Rumble, uh, not only did Bobby Lashley declare for the Rumble, but Seth freaking Rollins uh, with crutches, and then not with crutches. He's in the Rumble. <laughs> Theories in the Rumble as well. And... Uh, We'll, so they are joining the match along with already declared Kofi Kingston, Santos Escobar and Ricochet for the men's one. For the women's, uh, Candice LeRae and no doubt favourite to win the whole darn thing, Rhea Ripley. Good morning, Rhea. Hello there, mother. <laughs> Hello, mother. <laughs> Big ups to the mother. <laughs> so ent- officially declaring for the Rumble last night. Uh, they joined Liv Morgan as the other confirmed name so far. It's, it feels like Rhea's year for the Rumble. It feels like it would be, yeah. I don't know. Nobody else is sort of Bring it to mind as I'm sat here right now on this Tuesday morning with you, Tom, as to who could win that match. It's just got to be Rhea. Mm. Rhea, if you're watching this and it is you, wink at your screen. There you go. That's it. So the women's... What's that, what's that going to achieve? I just... I don't know. <laughs> just Buddy Murphy going, what just, are you doing? I'm the stroke. <laughs> 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 just, a, just, a, just a bit of fun with us, Henry. Uh, who watches? Hello. Uh, so the women's rumble, the men's rumble, taking shape for the for the night, along with uh, some action from Bray Wyatt and LA Knight. The pitch black match, sponsored by Monster. <laughs> is, that, is that Mountain Dew pitch black? <laughs> apparently, apparently, according to um, a lad called Joshua, who constantly writes in our comments, apparently it's the sign of Satan returning. What is uh, the Mountain Dew pitch black match? Wake up, people! Apparently that's what's happening. Fun story. I don't know how to make the rules. Uh, one person who won't be back in time for the Rumble, well, there's a, there's a concern that he won't back in, be in time for the Rumble, uh, is Johnny Gargano. So uh, he's out of action at the moment, isn't he? Yes, it got revealed during Raw last night that he's got a grade two AC sprain. I assume that's a bit more severe than a grade one or a bit lesser than a grade one. I don't know how it works. <laughs> All right, Dr. Do Tweddles, do don't we, show it off. Do we ascend or descend? <laughs> or condescend, as Matthew would say on the Cult Art Wrestling podcast. Next week on Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Gargano has spoke about this himself, though, going on Twitter to say, I injured my shoulder at a live event in Toronto. Ironic, because that was where they did the thing with the FTR, maybe. Is mm. that, what, is that some other I reference? thought it was a joke about Alanis Morissette who did that whole song about ironic <laughs> and none of it was ironic and that was the irony <laughs> fair enough she was playing 4D chess in the 90s was Alanis Morissette Gargano continues he says and the medical team is going to protect me from myself for a bit because these wrestlers they just want to wrestle don't they Tom no matter how hurt they are mm. but you just better believe I'm going to do everything he put on all capital letters to get back in that ring so I can be the guy you all know I can be just let me in that rumble <laughs> just let me in the rumble uh, so Gargano injured on that same holiday tour where AJ Styles suffered a broken angle and Bray Wyatt broke his finger. Did he? Yeah, apparently. Uh, It was a a cursed old... And they had all the travel issues and weather issues. It was was a rough old holiday tour. It was, you know, in terms of like... In terms of rough times around the Christmas period, it's that and National Lampoon. And the Tweddle household. And the Tweddle household. Was that a wild Christmas? Desolation. (laughs) Hopefully there is not desolation where you are this morning. You're having a good one and you'll have the latest wrestling news throughout the day at cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you. Bye. (laughs) Forgot that bit. Herbo time. (laughs)